Hey everybody and welcome to the Bull Ring today presented by our friends at MPM Marketing. I'm Alan Dietz along with Jess Ballard and Jess you got to go to Five Flags this weekend and work on your tan a little. A little bit. Yeah. The first day. Oh yeah, not say not the second day. And honestly, the first day that was the hottest I've ever been in my life. Yeah, I can imagine. Florida people are built different. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, that second race of the double header got rained out. But you know what? We've got a big show today, including uh, Jeremy Doss, who won on Friday night at Five Flags Speedway. Ryan Newman's going to join us as he gets ready for the SRX race at Motor Mile tomorrow, or Pulaski County motorsports park or whatever it's being called now uh we're gonna talk to toby christie about this wild weekend at pocono freddie query is gonna join us new asa stars competition director and Derek gluchaki coming off a big american canadian tour win up in quebec all right yes we got quite we got a lot of different angles coming at us this show no doubt about it and um what we're gonna do now is we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to go over the weekend that was in racing. And then we'll talk to Ryan Newman about his uh, win in the SRX at Stafford. And as they get ready to go to Virginia tomorrow. Five star bodies, the most advanced bodies on the market. Aerodynamically engineered, manufactured from the highest grade and lightest weight materials. Tested tough for optimum performance. The highest quality and most durable products you'll find anywhere. Our products help racers around the world reach victory lane. Winning never looked so good. Faster, lighter, stronger, better. Five star. Sparks will fly and smoke will roll at Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway as America's favorite short track roars back to life. Saturday, July 29th with the return of high speed, non-wing open wheel sprint cars for the first time in almost 20 years. The Pro Door Manufacturing 40 joining the 500 Sprint Car Tour will be the Jake Seri All-Stars Tour presented by Chevrolet Performance. Plus, all six local quarter mile divisions. Get your tickets for the return of high octane racing action at Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway Racing. Welcome to Race Face Digital Collectible Cards. Are you a driver or a team looking to expand your brand? Want to connect with your fans, give sponsors more exposure, and earn income from all card sales? Then Race Face Digital has you covered. Digitize your brand with five different collectible cards. Enrollment is now open to all drivers and all series. Visit racefacedigital.com today and use invite code RA1. Hey, I'm Ricky Stenhouse Jr., your 2023 Daytona 500 champion, and you're watching Racing America. Glad to have you back here with us after that short break. Alan and Jess here with you, and Jess, everybody is dying because you know what time it is. The highlights. The highlights. Let's go racing across America starting Friday night. Five Flags Speedway, ASA Southern Super Series. Hunter Robbins, Jeremy Dawes from the front row for the start. Dawes gains the advantage from the outside. Close call for the leaders here as the entire field catches the slowing 11 car. Clint Folsom. Did you see that? Or you couldn't see anything where you no, were? No, I couldn't see anything. I was sitting in the front row of the grandstands. I'm short. I didn't see any of this. So thank you. For the recap just five laps in the entire completion of the race changes after a 17 car pileup it results after the initial contact between Derek thorne and matt craig we saw that travis braden had really good brakes he did he's pretty <laughs> that's one thing i'll give props for restart 36 laps to go william byron able to get by dos for the lead byron leads the rest of the way but he gets disqualified at post race too. tick Handing the win to Jeremy Doss, who we'll hit, uh, hear from later. Also Friday night at Five Flags, the Outlaws in action. Bubba Winslow grabbing the lead from Cameron Henderson at the drop of the green flag. From there, it's all Winslow. Timothy Watson in the 28 tries to mount an attack on a restart. Winslow too strong. He leads the rest of the way for the Outlaws win. This, I think, could 
be a nominee for finish of the year. Saturday, Speedway 95, Granite State Pro Stock Series in the Go Fast 100. Mike Hopkins gets the advantage over Josh St. Clair at the start. Never a good position here. Jet Decker on the berm in turn one. He went Dukes of Hazard, but only halfway. <laughs> Hopkins leads almost the entire race, but late in the going, Garrett Hall gets it hooked up on the bottom. Hall's persistent pays off as he takes the win by a car length over Hopkins and St. Clair. Saturday, Salem Speedway in Indiana, the CRA late model sportsman in action. Veterans Don Mahaffey and Joe Cooksey lead the field to green. Casting average in the 63 challenges Mahaffey for the lead. These two, they had a great tussle until Everidge was finally able to wrestle the lead away with 12 laps to go. Everidge only able to maintain a car length or two over Mahaffey, but that was enough for Everidge to take the win. We will show you the street stock highlights from Salem. That would take the entire hour, but Chuck Barnes Sr. was the winner. Chuck Trust Barnes! Uh, 350 smack at Wiscasset Speedway in Maine for the Bentley Warren Classic. Rough start as a couple of cars go spinning down the front stretch. I flinched when I saw this because I <laughs> thought it was going to be big. P.J. Sturgios in the black car battles with the 07 of George Halliwell with Sturgios coming out on top of Bad, Bad, Brad. <laughs> Brad Fab gets the advantage on Sturgios. Following the restart, leaves the rest of the way for the win. Late models also in action at Wiscasset. Jonathan Emerson, the early leader. He'd get bypassed on the outside by Will Collins. Collins leads the rest of the way for the win over Tiger Colby and Emerson. Sunday, Autodrome Mominy, the Can Am 200 for the American Canadian Tour Late Models. Will LaRue in the 55 and Jonathan Boudreaux on the front row for the green flag. Problems with 44 laps to go as Eric Sand spins while others spin to avoid. Matthew Kingsbury now up front for the restart, but the 03 of Derek Buchaki wastes little time moving into the lead. 28 laps to go, a flat right rear sends Bouveret spinning off turn one. Buchaki goes unchallenged from there to take the win over Kingsbury and Jimmy Renfro. We'll hear from Derek here in just a little bit. And Pro Late Models at Slinger, the 16 of Mitch Delcamp and Jacob Hassler on the front row for the start. Early spin for the three of Tyler Harodnika in turn four. A few laps later, Mitchell Haver and Dennis Prunty get together in turn one. 14 laps to go. Zach Prunty spins off the bumper of Ryan Gutnick in turn three. In the end, it's a familiar story as Jesse Bernhagen takes yet another win. That's the highlights. You did it. Thank you. And we have very little time to waste because joining us next, SRX winner at Stafford, Ryan Newman. He checks in here on the Bullring after this. Five Star Bodies, the most advanced bodies on the market. Aerodynamically engineered, manufactured from the highest grade and lightest weight materials. Tested tough for optimum performance. The highest quality and most durable products you'll find anywhere. Our products help racers around the world reach victory lane. Winning never looked so good. Faster, lighter, stronger, better. Five star. One of racing's crown jewels, the 50th annual Oxford 250 returns to Oxford Plains Speedway with three big days of racing, August 25th through the 27th. See North America's best short trackers battle for a chance at $50,000 on Sunday, August 27th. Plus, racing for the ACT late models, New England Super Modifieds, and more. It's the 50th annual Oxford 250, August 25th through the 27th. And you can see it all on Racing America. Welcome to Race Face Digital Collectible Cards. Are you a driver or a team looking to expand your brand? Want to connect with your fans, give sponsors more exposure, and earn income from all card sales? Then Race Face Digital has you covered. Digitize your brand with five different collectible cards. Enrollment is now open to all drivers and all series. Visit racefacedigital.com today and use invite code RA1. I'm Bert Myers, driver of the Citrus Safe Modified, and you're watching Racing America. Welcome back to the Bull Ring with Jess and Alan, and our first guest today, 
coming off a big SRX win at Stafford this past weekend. And that is Ryan Newman. Ryan, congratulations on that win. Uh, we It could be two for two, but uh, that rain shortened race got you at the first one, but uh, you made up for it last week. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure if that's the made up for or not, but um, <laughs> I'm not, and I'm not sure if Danny won or Mother Nature won that first one, but either either way, it was still a lot of fun, um, especially the first week. I mean, the, the second week was fun getting in victory lane, no doubt, but the first week, jumping in a backup car for the feature and uh, sorting it out and then, you know, only having whatever it was, 50, 55 laps to uh, to get to second, be chasing down the leader and, and have uh, the uh, the lightning hit uh, on the Thursday Night Thunder show was um, good timing for them, bad timing for me. Yeah, um, you've had a year to, to or seven or eight races now under your belt in these SRX cars. Of course, you run the, the Smart Modified Sun 2. The cars are completely different. If you could compare the SRX car to anything that you've driven before, is there anything it compares to? Uh, not really. I mean, it it's not not really close to much of anything. And I and I didn't grow up a late model racer, um, so that that part I really can't correlate to because I think that would be the um, the the best crossover. I mean, it's uh it's like a it's like a TA2 style chassis, a Fury chassis, but then the, the body kit's entirely different. So uh, the way the bumpers line up and things like that. But, you know, this year's uh, Goodyear's got us on a new radial tire instead of the bias ply tire, which has been an easy transition. And we know that Goodyear's got a lot of experience on the radial side with 15 inch um, wheels and tires um, with, with NASCAR. So um, I think that that's been uh, good. Well, I'll, I'll be, it'll be interesting to see um, how it is this week at Motor Mile in Virginia. Um, you know, knowing that that tire's got to adapt to that racetrack too. So, um, but really nothing, nothing other than probably the closest thing would have been when I first started in cup with conventional springs, no coil binding, no bump stops, no, uh, big aero diffusers and things like that. Um, it's just a plain old four tired race car. <laughs> well, we were chatting off air. You mentioned that you've never seen motor mile. You've never seen the place. You've never made a lap. With as much experience as you have, how much realistically are you going to prepare going into a racetrack that you've never seen before? Are you watching film? How do you prepare for that? I pulled up good old YouTube and watched a video of the cars race. And, you know, that that'll show me just a little bit. But, you know, really uh, being an experienced driver and racing multiple series at different racetracks, not to the extent of Kyle Larson, but. Um, you know, a, a high percentage of, of what he's done that um, it's it's usually pretty easy to adapt. Um, in the end, it's two straightaways and two ends of a racetrack that make four corners. And, um, you know, having limited amount of practice, um, you know, I, I assume we'll have either five laps or 10 laps of practice. But either way, um, it's pretty fair, pretty, um, you know, equal amongst all of us. I don't know of the 12 drivers who will actually have had laps at Motor Mile in the past. Um, talk about full circle. Uh, you know, Thursday night thunder was such a, was such an iconic show and, and such an important show on ESPN and you and so many drivers started there primarily at, at Indianapolis raceway park. Now it comes back here with the SRX. When you look back on those original Thursday night thunder days, how much do you feel like it helped you to, to, maybe speed up that transition into stock cars there's no doubt that being on tv back in the day was um you know making it easier for us to leap a few steps when it came to moving up to the next level and uh, when i say us i mean myself um tony stewart kenny Irwin, jeff gordon even to the extent of like guys like kenny schrader who um, got a chance to experience some of that stuff long before there was thursday night thunder i mean there was there were um shows that were aired <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of funny that we're talking about this because i just sent him a an old midget race uh can't Ken, send ken schrader in an old midget race that i found on youtube a couple nights ago and um you know that that um that television exposure was huge for our careers across the board for everybody not just the drivers but for the crew and all the other people that were involved i mean it's it um it helped pave a, a smooth way or a smoother way than you know racing street stocks or late models and in non-televised races so um you know huge 
huge for me to be able to experience this, um, like you said, full circle, 20 plus years later in um, in the SRX series and, and uh, to do it on ESPN and, you know, with great support from Camping World and Bass Pro Shops, uh, South Point Casinos for me personally on my race car and then you still got the people like Goodyear and you know all the other supporters that we have with the SRX series to uh, to make us and give us the opportunity to do what we do did you ever get any rain for your farm I know you were mentioning that uh <laughs> Thursday night <laughs> we, we did two nights ago and it's still not enough all right it's, it's the crazy. truth I mean it's rained all around us but not here yeah so I don't know if that means we got hurricanes coming and they're only going to hit here or what but um, I know Mother Nature, just like uh, a couple weeks ago, Mother Nature has interesting ways of working. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting to figure out what she's got in store for, for uh, filling up the water tables here in, in Statesville, North Carolina. We'll just have a race there, and you should be fine. You'll get plenty of rain then, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> i got to find somebody to promote that for me. <laughs> well, I appreciate you joining us today, man. Uh, it's been uh, fun watching these races on Thursday nights. I think motor miles are going to be equally as fun. Good luck out there. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks for having me and uh, look forward to checking it out. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, Thursday nights, nine o'clock on ESPN. That's right. Be sure to check it out tomorrow night on ESPN. We come back. We're going to talk cup racing at Pocono this past weekend with Toby Christie. Ready to take your brand to the next level? At Victory Lane Design, we can help. If you are looking for a professional website, cutting edge logo, a hero card that separates you from the pack, or video production to keep you connected with your fans, then check out VictoryLaneDesign.com, where winning counts. Five Star Bodies, the most advanced bodies on the market. Aerodynamically engineered, manufactured from the highest grade and lightest weight materials. Tested tough for optimum performance. The highest quality and most durable products you'll find anywhere. Our products help racers around the world reach victory lane. Winning never looked so good. Faster, lighter, stronger, better. Five Star. One of racing's crown jewels, the 50th annual Oxford 250 returns to Oxford Plain Speedway with three big days of racing, August 25th through the 27th. See North America's best shore trackers battle for a chance at $50,000 on Sunday, August 27th. Plus, racing for the ACT late models, New England Super Modifieds, and more. It's the 50th annual Oxford 250, August 25th through the 27th. And you can see it all on Racing America. One of my favorite grassroots memories was watching Donnie Ray Crawford steal a Chili Bowl prelim night. Oh, that's not true. He's, he's ran me off a bunch of road courses and called me and said sorry, and I said I'm going to stand my ground next time. I, I don't, I'm not here to defend anything. I put both of those guys, the 48 and the 5, in an arrow situation. Didn't touch either one. How can you wreck someone you don't touch? They, they make a decision to either let off the gas and race side by side or hit the gas and hit the wall. I mean, I put them to those decisions. Uh, I didn't overshoot the corner. Uh, I was behind them. I tried to get position on them. I uh, knew it was going to be tight off of two. Uh, but always made sure I left a lane or more, more than a lane. You know, it's, it's the same, you know, these next-gen cars, for whatever reason, you get in that spot near the car on the outside, it, it sends them very tight. It, it just tightens their aero balance. Um, everyone knows it. Um, you know, Kyle is one of the best aero blockers in our field. Um, I knew once he got the lead and, and it was green, there was just no way I was going to go around on that. So I just backed off and just waited and, Try not to burn up my shit for a restart later because uh, he knows how to put you in a situation to just kill your car. So, um, you know, we waited and we, we pounced at, at the right time. He you know, didn't get his right sides clean and drove in the corner just too far and let us get beside him. And then I thought we were going to race it out off of two, but uh, 
you know, it was just he got in the fence. Well, the road to the cup went through Pocono this past weekend, and as you saw, Denny Hamlin pretty unapologetic about how we got to victory lane on Sunday. Joining us now from TobyChristie.com and Racing America's editor in chief is Toby Christie, and a lot to to take out of of this race. And I know you had a piece on Racing America earlier this week uh, talking about why we love races like Sunday. Yeah, I mean, I thought overall the race was a really really good race. Uh, the action was pretty good all the way through. Uh, we saw some pretty good battles up front, uh, throughout the day. And, uh, I feel like we had a pretty good mix of who was here, there and everywhere. And at the end, uh, we had two guys who were friends off the track, uh, having altercations on the track for the race win, which was pretty compelling. I mean, that, that sold out crowd, which first off, how cool is it? We had a sold out crowd at Pocono, yeah. uh, for one, and then had the race we had and then had that kind of energy, uh, afterwards from the fans. I thought was really cool. Did you see that aerial, like that? contrasted five years ago versus the day with the infield and uh to only have one race they have done a masterful job to to make it count no d definitely I, i'm right there with you i feel like they've done a really good job of proving that less can be more um they've done a really really good job That's what i always say yeah yeah ben, ben may and his team have just done an amazing job and i don't know pocono is one of those tracks you go, you got to go experience Pocono in person. No, no you know? doubt. <laughs> and it's, I don't know, so much fun. I was watching the race in the car on the way home from Pensacola, sitting next to a Hendrick Motorsports employee. Yeah. And so his driver, he was, was not yeah. happy. I mean, yeah, the 48 car, we're, you know, pulling for him, obviously. And I will that, not put that on Danny Hamlin. All right. The 48 got loose. Toby? Well, uh, I mean, I think out of the, the incidents he had on the day, I think that was the one that was less egregious. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I think also the one for the win, it's for the win. So, I mean, mm. it is what it is. You're going to have moments like that, and I think that's what makes this sport great. That's what I kind of wrote about on Racing America this week was these are the moments we live for. Uh, as NASCAR fans, as people who love this sport, you want uh, intensity. You want people who want it bad and will kind of maybe go over the line just a little bit to get it um did he go over the line a little bit maybe uh he doesn't think he did uh kyle larson definitely thinks that he did uh and somewhere in the middle is probably the truth and and we've seen how the fans react both ways there's fans calling out kyle larson for the things he's done in the past there's people calling out danny hamlin for what he did this time so uh it's it's an interesting thing but at the end of the day we're all talking we're all buzzing about it and uh for hours after a race at pocono we had fans on twitter uh you know raising their voice about things one way or the other which i think is a good thing yeah, for sure. I don't think we're here at all, but do you think that there's a point where too much of this, of these controversies is like, you know, we start to get like WWE, like wrestling, <laughs> or do you think like this stuff is just always good, even if we have it this much every weekend? Well, I think if you have people right rearing, people and stuff like that where they're just completely hooking them on purpose that's yeah. where it gets to be a bit much but this was honestly two guys racing really hard uh barely any contact i mean it i mean it was the smallest contact you could possibly have uh obviously at pocono with these turns the way they are uh any kind of contact puts you out of line once you're out of line you're going to probably be in the wall if you don't lift larson didn't lift he got in the wall and and that was it um uh, so i mean it is what it is but at the end of the day it was really hard racing um, and when you're racing for the win, you expect it to be hard racing. Yeah. Here's my soapbox. It has absolutely nothing to do with any of that. All views are mine and mine solely. <laughs> Racing America <laughs> does not necessarily share these views. They may, but they don't have to. You probably don't. I, I, the, the, whoever the race director is for NASCAR, they got to figure out this stuff with cautions whenever they come out with, with a lap or two to go. And I'll tell you what's aggravating about this one this past Sunday is more than likely Tyler Reddick could have won that race had that caution come out. Mm -hmm. And it totally took that opportunity away from him. Now you can say, well, if the 41 doesn't spin, then, um, 
then it's, it's no issue and 11 is going to win and all of that's true. But there is no consistency with how they – it seems like they do good all the way up to the very end of the race and then they forget how to – what they're doing. Well, I also dislike that, you know, half a lap earlier it wasn't worthy of a caution and then all of a sudden we go a half lap later and now all of a sudden it's a caution. So, yeah, somebody else I think spun out coming out of – turned three and went straight down pit road and they threw the caution and i'm like what what are you people <laughs> what are you looking at yeah no we've had some some incidents the last few years where a guy just barely kicks sideways and that's enough for them to to throw the caution if it's like lap 100 you get to the end lap one's uh, 159 and they kind of go oh you know let's try to let this thing play out but it's one of those things where if it's a, a safety hazard and you feel like it's a true legitimate safety hazard uh I think you err on the side of caution and throw the caution. Well, when they waited, they had to. Yeah. I mean, they, they held it as long as they could. And, and, you know, I like it. They told and tell they get in places like that, where, uh, if somebody cr on the last lap crashes going into turn one, they let it go because the fields, you know, by the time they come back around, they're going to have crossed the finish line and the race is over. But I just, I was just so mad, uh, at that. And, uh, I don't know. I, yeah. I hate to see that. And yeah, I mean, I the incident see. happened in turn two. Yeah. And they had all the way through turn three, all the way down that long straightaway to finish things off to figure out, okay, he's not moving. This is probably, we probably should call the yellow. No, and it's like, okay, you got, you're coming out of turn three and you got all this way to the start finish line. It's like, all right, throw the caution. The guy's not going to be moved, you know, if you're 300 yards before the start finish line or 300 yards after it. So. It is what it is. Denny Hamlin gets his 50th win, and that's a that's a big deal and good for him. But I just feel like we got cheated out of a, a pretty well, good finish. You can there. say we got cheated out of a good finish, but we still had a good finish. And at the end of the day, we have this controversy to that's talk right. about, too, which is fun. Right? Yeah, it's, it's y'all right. Look, I have not seen Alan Dietz this passionate about a topic it's amazing. on this show in a while. So it's I'm some, glad they didn't throw the caution It's down. amazing how that works <laughs> out every time. It seems like it works out just perfect. Well, Toby, thanks for joining us today, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll all be together next week after this. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, you know, they might not like what I say. No, no. more Alan Deet show. Yeah, no, it'd be the <laughs> Jess Ballard show. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk to the new ASA Stars Competition Director, Freddie Query. He'll be with us after this. What creates a winning combination? Quality. Focus, discipline, and most importantly, speed. At Pepper Jack Kennels, we provide exceptional water and land training services for hardworking retrievers. From leading in the field to leading on the track, together we establish winning dogs and a winning team. Devoted to retrievers and motorsports, we are Pepper Jack Kennels. Visit us online to learn more. SRI Performance and Stock Car Steel are your all-inclusive motorsports warehouses with more than 450 product lines. They have everything to put you in victory lane, from professional racing to street performance. SRI and Stock Car Steel have you covered with leading brands as well as a large selection of steel, aluminum, and plastics. With locations in North Carolina and Indiana, access has never been easier. SRI has the world's largest inventory of used parts. SRI Performance in Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, your one-stop shops for everything racing. Sparks will fly and smoke will roll at Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway as America's favorite short track roars back to life. Saturday, July 29th with the return of high-speed, non-wing open-wheel sprint cars for the first time in almost 20 years. The ProDoor Manufacturing 40 joining the 500 Sprint Car Tour will be the Jake Seri All-Stars Tour presented by Chevrolet Performance. Plus, all six local quarter-mile divisions. Get your tickets for the return of high-octane racing action at Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. Racing. Welcome to the new home for race fans, Racing America. Live short track racing. Exclusive team content. <laughs> Any NASCAR fan is really a short track fan at heart. Behind the scenes access. From grassroots to NASCAR, join us at the home for race fans everywhere. Racing America, it's in our DNA.
Welcome back to the Bull Ring presented by MPM Marketing. I'm Alan Dietz. She is Jess Ballard. And our ASA list person this week, not... He's still in, an A-lister. Yeah, well, he's not necessarily a driver, though, in this sense. This is Freddie Query, legendary driver, now ASA Stars Competition Director. Uh, Freddie, it's an honor to have you. We could do an hour-long show with you about the old days, but uh, we want to talk to you here about uh, about this new role that you've got with ASA stars. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, uh, of course, you know, the ASA stars national tour thing is, is, a is a new place for super late model racers to run from all over the country. Gives them opportunity to run for good money, uh, and, and prestige. And there's point system that there's even more money at the end of the rainbow there for that. Um, you know, it's brand new. Uh, it started, you know, the talk of it started about a year ago or a little more from now. And then it started at the first of this year racing a, a 10 race series. Um, I don't know. I just, uh, I, in, in the beginning, uh, well, let, let me back on up. a couple of years ago. I had uh, kind of got burnt out on, on racing. Uh, I guess after 40 some years, it was about time. But uh, I, you know, I, I had been working with with people and building them cars and, and working with them on, uh, on, uh, how to do the setups and getting them going, driving and so forth. And, and decided I was going to do something else. So came back to my shop and started doing, uh, hot rod street cars and just, I don't know, first one thing and another to stay busy and, and, and playing a little bit too, a little more time on my hands. Um, but I was attracted to this because the whole time I raced, um, it, there, there for the longest time there was a place that you could go run and travel a little bit and race for bigger money and i think the biggest attraction for me back in the days and i'm speaking of the uh, uh the hooters pro cup series i'm speaking of the uh, all pro series of nascar there were a few others around the big 10 series of concord and like i said some others around but the, the money was bigger and, and I was making a living racing. Uh, so, you know, I, I was racing for money, but, but also part of the satisfaction in, in racing is, is, is beating, is beating your competitors on the racetrack and the better your competitors are when you beat them, the more self self satisfaction that you get out of it. So all that being said, this national tour concept here is to bring together the best of the best. Uh, 10 times a year at 10 different locations. And, you know, as, as a racer, you got a chance to race against uh, the best of the best and beat them and, and uh, put that feather in your hat. So that's, that's what attracted me to become a part of it. Well, Freddie, first of all, congratulations. Second of all, this is a million dollar question. I think <laughs> Okay, well, okay. Well, I'm going I'm to let you ask him that. Do you? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to let gonna you ask, ask him that. I was just going to say that, well, we talk about we talk to a lot of different racers on this show that play a lot of different roles in the sport. I'd say promoters are one job that I'm just like, oh man, I would not want that job. That's a really hard job. We need really great promoters. I feel like they always get tomatoes thrown at them on social media, and then I would put a uh, competition director <laughs> right below that. And I think it's a, I think that's a tough job, and you gotta got the. You, I think they made a great move here but i think you're a little crazy but i'm really <laughs> excited um but how do you how do you um i don't know you're gonna have to have tough skin do, have you thought about any of this <laughs> well i did think about it uh, quite a bit and and my wife may have been more aware of what i was getting into than than maybe i was because you know she forewarned me quite often about what what possible be involved in doing this but uh, all that being said, uh, I am a little crazy, so that that helped in this situation. <laughs> thank you. I think you got to be to be a race car driver, and, mm. and 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 you know I love doing that for a long time. Um, but I raced with some great promoters back in the day uh, uh, that that really did a good job of doing what they did, and they weren't my favorite people a lot of times back then. But now looking back on what they provided us the opportunity to do, 
they 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 did a better job and they did it with a strong hold they did it with tough love um and the best tech people that i've ever been around were the same way you know they were they were hard fast about their rules you knew exactly what to expect when you came to the racetrack um and and i learned that the the stricter the rules were for everybody the easier it was for me as a car builder and a race car driver because I knew exactly what I had to do. I didn't have to spend a, a big part of my time trying to figure out how I was going to fudge everything to make it better than what the rules allowed, even though you always play in the gray area as a racer. That's what you do. Um, the rules were enforced, and you knew what to expect. You knew how big a gun to take to the racetrack. Uh, the way it is right now, and from what, I've only been to one race. I went to Anderson, Indiana last week to experience that. Um, and, and, and from what I see right now, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of confusion amongst the racers because they're not really sure what to expect when they come to the racetrack. And it's, it's, uh, it's keeping some people away. I feel like mm -hmm. because just, just because of that, well, what I hope to implement into it is, uh, and, and it'll be next year, and we're already working on next year's rule package, which won't be much different than what it is right now. In the South, the the Midwest is probably going to have some, uh, if they're going to compete in this, they're going to have to make some changes. Um, but they need to because they're out of hand. They're where we were probably 10 years ago or 15, I'm going to say, down here. And you, you, you'd spend all your time all week long cheating your bodies up more or doing whatever you had to do because there was no tech. Well, now there is, and there has been for a while. And, and, and the, the, the people that are, that are the tech people in, in, in this uh, stars tour thing, um, uh, they're, they're also a little bit confused because they don't know. It's hard as a tech person to know how strict you need to be because number one is you don't want to chase racers off. And, and you're scared that if you enforce things too much, you chase them off. But in my world of racing, all the years, I saw the biggest crowds at the races to where racers knew exactly what to expect. And that's what I hope to bring to the table. Well, we look forward to it. Uh, and, and what you got, uh, I know a lot of people have a lot of respect for you. And it definitely opened my eyes and a lot of other folks' eyes. Uh, ASA stars, they'll be at Wisconsin international coming up next Tuesday and, uh, right. Freddie query is going to be a big part of it all. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. All righty. And we are going to talk to Freddie some more for sure, because, uh, I think there's a, a lot that, uh, that he can share with us. Mm -hmm. We come back. We're going to talk to our act winner from Mominy, Derek Guchaki after this. Welcome to the new home for race fans, Racing America. Live short track racing. Exclusive team content. <laughs> Any NASCAR fan is really a short track fan at heart. Behind the scenes access. From grassroots to NASCAR, join us at the home for race fans everywhere. Racing America, it's in our DNA. SRI Performance and Stock Car Steel are your all-inclusive motorsports warehouses with more than 450 product lines. They have everything to put you in victory lane, from professional racing to street performance. SRI and Stock Car Steel have you covered with leading brands as well as a large selection of steel, aluminum, and plastics. With locations in North Carolina and Indiana, access has never been easier. SRI has the world's largest inventory of used parts. SRI Performance in Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, your one-stop shops for everything racing. One of racing's crown jewels, the 50th annual Oxford 250 returns to Oxford Plain Speedway with three big days of racing, August 25th through the 27th. See North America's best short trackers battle for a chance at $50,000 on Sunday, August 27th. Plus, racing for the ACT late models, New England Super Modifieds, and more. It's the 50th annual Oxford 250, August 25th through the 27th. And you can see it all on Racing America. What creates a winning combination? Quality, focus, discipline, and most importantly, speed. 
At Pepperjack Kennels, we provide exceptional water and land training services for hardworking retrievers. From leading in the field to leading on the track, together we establish winning dogs and a winning team. Devoted to retrievers and motorsports, we are Pepper Jack Kennels. Visit us online to learn more. Hi, I'm Derek Luchaki and you're watching Racing America. Welcome back to the Bull Ring presented by MPM Marketing. Alan and Jess here with you. And if you were uh, lucky enough to catch it on Sunday afternoon, the American Canadian Tour made their second trip to Quebec this past weekend at Autodrome Mominy. And the winner of the Can Am 200 was Derek Lukaki. Derek joining us now. Congratulations, man. I, I know it's got to be a big win to, to go up there and get that checkered flag in Quebec. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was a long drive for us, and luckily enough, we were able to make the ride home with the trophy. What's it like uh, when you go up there? Because uh, I, I know that Quebec is not really like any other place in North America, uh, let alone Canada, but boy, have they got some passionate race fans. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, we had a great crowd to say uh, it got rained out there the Sunday. We pulled in, there was uh, you know, ton of campers out there. The ground was all muddy and stuff, and they were still out there. You know, uh, long before the race had started, they were in the grandstands and stuff. So it's definitely uh, cool to see. And you know, the Quebec racers and stuff when they were announcing all of them, the uh, crowd standing up, cheering, and everything. That was uh, it was definitely a cool experience. That's for sure. It kind of reminds me of the Wisconsin race mm -hmm. fans, where yeah. they're just I don't know, they're they're die hard. They make the atmosphere fun and exciting. And if I'm not mistaken, this is your third win this season in the ACT tour. Uh, what have you, I mean, what do you credit uh, the success you've had and the consistency? Yeah, you know, just, just preparation, you know what I mean? A lot of hours in the garage there before every week. And uh, the people around you, that's for sure. I have a great crew. Um, we were a little shorthanded there in Canada, so it made it a little more stressful. But uh yeah, definitely the people around me and uh, just having the same group of people at the racetrack doing the same things every week. It uh, takes a lot of stress off of me, and uh, I have people I can trust around me, so it helps out a lot. I know we've got a big uh, American-Canadian tour race coming up here on Racing America August 5th, the uh, Milton Cat Midsummer 250 at White Mountain Motorsports Park. Uh, $10,000 to win that race, also being... Uh, taped for short track America on Mav TV. You know, I, I talked, I think it was, uh, Johnny Clark a couple of weeks ago after the past race. I don't know what it is, but when at white mountain, it looks like you guys are on the edge every lap. I, is that the case? Yeah, that's for sure. You know, all the weekly guys and ACT guys too, you know, they, they fire off so fast. So it's, it's tough to save, you know, uh, you try to save as much as you can, but when everyone else is taking off driving, you know, pretty hard, it's it's tough to lay back and watch them drive away. So it uh, it makes everyone in the field drive harder, and uh, there's a whole lot of not a lot of saving going on there. That's for sure. Um. So, what does the rest of your 2023 season look like? Um. We're gonna focus on the Act Tour. Um. We're fourth in points. We had a couple of DNFs, so we're gonna try to make up as much as we can. Uh, um. We might sneak in some weekly shows at like Thompson stuff like that, but right now just focus on ACT. I want to look even further ahead. Uh, have you thought any about 2024? And, and if so, is is the plan to stick with, with these American Canadian tour late models? Uh, yeah, I would say that's probably set in stone, the ACT stuff. Um, I'm trying to get some stuff together to maybe do modifieds next year, part-time or something like that. But right now, the only thing set in stone is ACT. You know, for folks that don't know, uh, you know, you'll see a, an act car and a pass car at a lot of the same racetracks and stuff. But uh, your cars are quite a bit different, mainly with the smaller – well, I don't want to say mainly, but I know the smaller tire is a big, is a big part of that. Does it um, – does it affect how you go out there and race? I mean, do you have to 
to save more with the smaller tire? How, how do you race it compared to a larger tire? Um, the, just the lack of grip. Um, that's probably the biggest difference between ACT and pass. Um, I don't have a ton of experience with the pass cars, but I've, uh, probably done 10, 12 races in one now. And, uh, just the biggest difference is the grip level. The pass cars are going a lot faster through the center of the corner and stuff like that with just bigger tires and stuff. But, uh, yeah, the tires ACT seem to fall off pretty good if you abuse them. So, uh, the lack of grip and you probably have to save a little bit more too. I would agree with that. Well, congratulations on that win. We enjoy following you guys here on Racing American. I know we'll see a lot more of you guys here in August as well. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Derek Luchaki, your winner at Mominy. When we come back, we're going to talk to Jeremy Doss coming off that big win at Five Flags. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety, providing the most advanced driver safety products to NASCAR, IndyCar, Sprint Cars, and Sports Cars drivers. From grassroots to professional racers, HMS Motorsport has over 25 years experience outfitting drivers with the best gear on the market. Equipped with first-hand product knowledge, our experts are ready to help you select the best harness belts, seats, head restraints, helmets, and racing attire for your type of racing. HMS is even the exclusive importer for Schrode belts, shoe helmets and Valero base layers. Visit one of our stores in Mooresville, North Carolina or Danvers, Massachusetts or check us online at hmsmotorsport.com where you can learn the details of our products and order online. Safety starts here. What creates a winning combination? Quality, focus, discipline, and most importantly, speed. At Pepperjack Kennels, we provide exceptional water and land training services for hardworking retrievers from leading in the field to leading on the track. Together, we establish winning dogs and a winning team. Devoted to retrievers and motorsports, we are Pepper Jack Kennels. Visit us online to learn more. Ready to take your brand to the next level? At Victory Lane Design, we can help. If you are looking for a professional website, cutting edge logo, a hero card that separates you from the pack. Or video production to keep you connected with your fans. Then check out VictoryLaneDesign.com where winning counts. One of racing's crown jewels, the 50th annual Oxford 250, returns to Oxford Plain Speedway with three big days of racing, August 25th through the 27th. See North America's best short trackers battle for a chance at $50,000 on Sunday, August 27th. Plus, racing for the ACT late models, New England Super Modifieds, and more. It's the 50th annual Oxford 250, August 25th through the 27th. And you can see it all on Racing America. Glad you could join us today here on Racing America, presented by MPM Marketing. Alan and Jess here with you. Joining us now, the winner of this past weekend's Blizzard ASA Southern Super Series Race at Five Flags Speedway, California's own Jeremy Doss. Congratulations and uh Boy, this is uh, this has been a long journey for for you and Bob Lines and everybody involved to to get from where you guys started out at Five Flags to ending up in Victory Lane this past week. Congratulations! Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of the toughest racetracks I've ever raced at. So uh, to come out on top against uh, the competition we're racing against is pretty special. Well, speaking from experience, I know that. Uh, disqualification is not the way that you want to win but a win's a win and I was very excited to see I think I saw you guys get to take a victory lane picture on the front stretch we didn't get to do that so I was very jealous <laughs> um but yeah congratulations this week I don't know about you but this weekend was the hottest I've ever been at a racetrack the conditions were just crazy I think there was a red flag during the race just to like give drivers water i think right it was one i don't know if it was during the big wreck or but there was some point they did that yeah it, it was crazy so anyway i, I did want to talk about that big wreck there i can't remember were you were you in that or was that behind you 
Uh, at that point, it was behind me. I oh, think yeah. we were leading the race at yeah. that point. So. Yes, he was way out front. That's why he wasn't anywhere close to Yeah, him. well, lucky you. That was crazy. <laughs> um, but, yeah, tell us how the whole the whole race kind of played out for you guys from start to finish. I felt like it went pretty well. Uh, we were able to get a good jump on the start and take the lead early. Um, it was honestly uh, not too bad. It's, it's a bit different trying to set the pace there at that track. Uh, just trying to manage and save tires is pretty tough and you can, you never really know if you're doing a good enough job. I kind of just tried to get seven, eight car length lead. And I think at that point, Bubba was in second and I figured he was probably doing a good job at saving his tires. So I just kind of just tried to match his times and pace myself. And, um, in the end of the day, we crossed the line second, but, um, it wasn't for a lack of effort. I was happy with the speed we had and, um, I was able to, I was happy to get end up out on top. Here's a segue for you, Jeremy, a uh, uh, former Kowicki driver development champion. And next uh, Tuesday, we're going to, uh, or next Wednesday, we're going to update the points for you here on uh, the Bullring and Racing America. And um, chat with one of those drivers or so uh, that hope to get to where Jeremy has and, and get into victory lane at places like Five Flags. You've had enough races there now jeremy um is there anything that you can take from from a hot humid gnarly racetrack like you guys were on last week and apply it to the derby or do you have to just throw all of that out um i feel like setup wise i'm not i'm not too sure but for a driver i feel like more laps you get at a place like that it's always going to help like uh being able to lead laps and go set the pace i honestly learned a bunch so uh on how to manage the tires at a place like that and uh so i think i think it does apply to the derby in some aspects what's the rest of the year look like for you um i think we're gonna run i-44 at the srl national race um the rest of the blizzard races i think we're gonna try the all-american 400 for the first time and then the snowball derby so um a good good bunch of races coming up and i'm excited for them nothing out west uh no uh our goal was to run back east um and get honestly my goal at the beginning of the year was to get better for the derby and run five flags that's all i wanted to do and then the car owner and team uh they they wanted to add a few races um back east some bigger events that we haven't done before so uh honestly the, the car owner's so busy and we're so busy with work as well so it's we got to pick and choose what races we run. Hey, the West Coast lost as the East Coast gain. We love seeing you uh, race here back east, and uh, wish you the best of luck uh, on these uh, upcoming races. And I know we'll see a lot of you here on Racing America. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, you guys. All right, that's Jeremy Dost, winner at Five Flags this past weekend. When we come back, we'll tell you what you can see on Racing America this weekend and even tonight. So stay tuned. Sparks will fly and smoke will roll at Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway as America's favorite short track roars back to life. Saturday, July 29th with the return of high-speed, non-wing open-wheel sprint cars for the first time in almost 20 years. The Prodor Manufacturing 40 joining the 500 Sprint Car Tour will be the Jake Seary All-Stars Tour presented by Chevrolet Performance. Plus, all six local quarter-mile divisions. Get your tickets for the return of high-octane racing action at Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway.Racing. Welcome to Raceface Digital Collectible Cards. Are you a driver or a team looking to expand your brand? Want to connect with your fans, give sponsors more exposure, and earn income from all card sales? Then Raceface Digital has you covered. Digitize your brand with five different collectible cards. Enrollment is now open to all drivers and all series. Visit racefacedigital.com today and use invite code RA1. Communication is key in the racing world. When it comes to at-the-track communications, there is only one place to call. Racing Electronics is the number one source for professional race communications worldwide. 
Over 20 years in the business proves their dedication to the sport. With every driver and crew communication, two-way radios and headsets, scanners and more, Racing Electronics is a one-stop communication source for all your motorsports needs. Before the green flag flies, make sure you have all your team communication gear from Racing Electronics. Stop by and see a Racing Electronics representative at the track near you. Visit their showroom in Concord, North Carolina, or order online at racingelectronics.com. Get up on your feet, race fans. Can you believe it? Right now, racing, in my opinion, is as healthy as it's been in the last 15 to 20 years. Just wanted to make that first lap. I'm go! go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Bull Ring this afternoon. Around the corner. What is going to be here on Racing America? Well, it all starts. Saturday will be at uh, Anderson Speedway in Indiana. The Midwest Modified Tour will be the feature there. Going to head back to Mobile International Speedway as they've got local racing on tap. Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway, they'll have the JIG CRA All-Stars in action. Hey, we're getting closer to the Oxford 250 here on Racing America. Every race there is important for drivers getting ready for the 250. Mm -hmm. We'll be at Oxford Plains Speedway Saturday night for the Oxford Championship Series. And then we wind it all down Sunday afternoon at Slinger Speedway in Wisconsin. The Pro Late Models again on tap. That gets you caught up on where we'll be. When we come back, we'll wrap up another boring. Ready to take your brand to the next level? At Victory Lane Design, we can help. If you are looking for a professional website, cutting edge logo, a hero card that separates you from the pack, or video production to keep you connected with your fans, then check out VictoryLaneDesign.com where winning counts. SRI Performance and Stock Car Steel are your all-inclusive motorsports warehouses with more than 450 product lines. They have everything to put you in victory lane, from professional racing to street performance. SRI and Stock Car Steel have you covered with leading brands as well as a large selection of steel, aluminum, and plastics. With locations in North Carolina and Indiana, access has never been easier. SRI has the world's largest inventory of used parts. SRI Performance in Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, your one-stop shops for everything racing. White flag is out here on another episode of The Bull Ring. We want to thank our guests today, Ryan Newman, Freddie Query, Toby Christie, Derek Gluchaki, and Jeremy Doss. Hey, that's a pretty good show, Jess. Uh, that's what I'm saying. We covered all corners. We did cover all corners, and we're going to cover... Cars Tour tomorrow. Cars Tour Weekly returns. Jess and J.D. Bowser going to get you ready for Throwback Weekend at Hickory. That'll be Thursday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Clay Rogers is going to join. PRN's Doug Rice will also be here with us as we look back on those Hooters Pro Cup days. So uh, that'll be a lot of fun again. Cars Tour Weekly, Thursday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. 
Thank you. Yes. For that. Yes. <laughs> and we will hope to see you there, and we hope to see you uh, back here on Racing America next week for another episode of The Bull Ring. See you next week. <laughs>